the North Meseta region, and um, Alba will talk about um, it and also talk about Abadia. Okay, comes with my hometown, with North Meseta. This place uh, name is uh, not very high mountains, but quite, let's say, mountain allies. And and the two mesetas, the no meseta is high altitude and it could reach 900 meters of sea level. And uh, what is really interesting about it is that uh, it is surrounded by mountains. Um, and then the little river flows through the meseta, which is the longest river with wineries in the entire world. Uh, because it flows to the Meseta, I believe where all the where the region is, um, uh, Los Arribes, and then Zamora where, where the Toro, uh, Toro is, and then it flows uh, to Portugal and then into the Atlantic Ocean. Portugal, the name changed from there to Gondo. So it's quite protected, uh, uh, you know, from all the mountains and as well protect electricity from humidity and rain. So it's quite continental planet. Uh, which shift day night temperatures. Uh, and actually I would say it's the coolest uh, uh, wine region in Spain. And even more uh, one of the coolest regions even in Europe uh, because it's uh, uh, usually a very late light break. Uh, Average in mid May, and then we harvest it by September. So, usually, uh, there is a very short period in what we call the uh, period free of frost, uh, which is when the vine should be out. Um, there's a huge diversity of soils, uh, and usually, the Pradillo or Tita de Toro should be the, the variety need to. The reason is actually it is a variety which means ripens early and adapts very well in that very short period of time for the early cycle. There's quite a handful of, uh, of wineries in this region, as you can Say Solo, Alusa, Diego, Alto, in Rivera del Pueblo. Right next to Rivera del Pueblo is on the other Torca. In the bottom line, uh, very close, Mauro, who is very well known, and then Rueda, we have two wineries, the Montale, uh, I think, out of the Castro, and then Toro, the Lucas, Martelera. Uh, also, Bierzo is considered part of the region, which is in halfway to Cadiz. Um, and very interesting one is to, to meet. Uh, so, Abadia de Puerta, we make the trip from Agua. That's the Dora River, swinging. Uh, and that is uh, Abadia de Puerta, where I have been working over 25 years already. And uh, I'm a quite rare person. And the wine is a long term thing, so it's still, it's still a room to improve. Uh, there's a lot of history. In uh, yeah, we're in the heart of the Moor Valley, and uh, when Spain was invaded by the Moors, uh, Asturias was the only region that you know remained, uh, you know, unconquered. And from there is what we call the Reconquista, the reconquer of the territory. As some territory was, you know, gained back to the Moors, there were a, a, a net of Monasteries get settled to bring back the Catholic religion to, to Spain. And this is one of the, these monasteries founded in 1146. <laughs> the wine ring is not there for obvious reasons. We run, we refer to this, this monastery and now it's a beautiful hotel, five star, uh, one star mission and restaurant, but this is a different story. Uh, this is probably the wine tourism, but we can, we can help. So. And, uh, and the winery actually is on, on, on the other side of the valley. Right? Um, we are proud today that, uh, to say that uh, maybe 
of the ninth centuries. It is probably the most splendorous times on this piece of land uh, where we help to revert the, all the uh, all the vineyards and, and also the surrounding uh, vegetation, forests, lots of biodiversity, and we care about nature and try to lend the different habitats to their work to balance the the town where we are based about the trail. And the OB, our director, since last year, I know. We actually wanted to join the Bella but uh, they wouldn't allow us because if they would open the door towards uh, the west, they should have to open and doors and move in. So we understood, so we sort of uh, build our own way of uh, making wines and how we understand their are. And, uh, and this, with our little differences with the uh, Red granted us this recognition of the OP. Basically, it's a more narrow valley, and, and the converse from the plateau go down the valley and, and stays on the lower part of the valley. So we have like a knob thing, it's a cooler plot of our pagos close to the river and warmer sites on the on the slope. Uh, all of them is a uh, uh, north facing slope uh, of the vineyards and also uh, quite high altitude, you know, which makes not only Alabama but the old Meseta one of the regions better prepared uh, to mediate climate change. Because we used to have a lot of uh, cold deficits, we can very rich practice, but now we one manage, we can, we can really uh, make uh, very intense ones. Um, quite a big state, 192 hectares, uh, but we like this into 54 small plots. So this is what I call micro agriculture. We, we, we work side by side, uh, doing whatever it needs to be done in, in order to get the best out of it. And only you can do this after 25 years, now we can the real uh, fruit that we were on, I would say the, the wines that we were turning off 25 years ago. Most of them are I also work with several other varietals. And actually, we have under study because we have a uh, we like to study a lot, and actually we have um, an innovation academy called the uh, Tedrun Academy that I run, which we tell about how we uh, understand our terroir and, and, and how we understand the different uh, varietals that we now grow to see how they perform with the new climatic uh, conditions. We found, for example, Garnacha, about an old varietal in the Duero River is now performing beautifully because it's carving the city that the Pernilla is difficult to maintain. So it's a perfect match from now on. Uh, we will be fully certified in 2024. Now we have five, half of the constituents uh, certified. And uh, yeah, climate change is our specialty. I was uh, sorry. Uncle, uh, you are a wine and Pascal de Beck is our uh, assistant wine uh, Former wine maker from Chateau de Vannes, Chateau de Vannes. Can I ask a question? In the previous uh, screen, you mentioned that the kind of artist DOP are here, there has a single DOP. All the other wineries that espouse that are your own DOP. No, um, you can find in Grand Esparos, wines in Vino de Mesa. In you, you could find it. Huh? So, Abadir, the purpose is a spectrum. I mean, is it the only one? We were many years that were Vino de la Vía by Castilla León. We were already part of Grand Esparos. Because Grand Esparos, you know, is focused on the terroir based philosophy. And, and you know, the Vino de Mesa, what comes after. Whatever you have, it's okay. 
It's, it's much more the, the quality behind your Lego and the way of doing things. No? It is true that we are in between the DOP, we are being on the pile, classified as being on the pile, but because of the confusion, I think, that you mentioned, uh, we decided to state that we are which is easier to understand, but at, at the end is equivalent to you know, the power. Right? It's the same, the same level. Yeah, yeah we, we do many sustainable initiatives, and to mention one, for example, we are now every year measuring with a company, uh, agro company, the amount and the number of insects that we can collect in the margins of our vineyards. And every year we're going on those, getting that our practices are sort of uh, in, in good uh, lives with the environment. Also, we do have this uh, nest for small birds that are really perfect answer to uh, insects' lives. Uh, and uh, now we have a little problem with the uh, road deer that bites our. Uh, leaves and, and eat our vegetables, and the end is part of the business. Very strict time. Uh, it was hard to write as I said, uh, high elevation and high temperature variation. That picture over there with the close end reality at the end is, could be like eight centuries ago. Uh, my boss is nice to say that we are one of the oldest wineries in the world. It's, uh, be, it, was, it was the monks bringing the, the, the grapes from, from Burgundy uh, in the Tosset. Okay, so. so we have a huge diversity of soils, mainly sedimentation of the river, gravel and sand towards the river. And as we go up the slope, you know, the erosion has taken down on the soil. And the mother rock is closer to the surface, which is limestone. Uh, so, totally different behavior and of the Pecanillo up there, also the temperatures, so different lines. So, at the end, what we do is make a, uh, you know, work block by block uh, and make uh, this line set and set down in the red capsule, which is the blend of the best wines coming from the different blocks. Uh, because after you know individual harvesting, individual uh, wine making, and we get 50 for one, let's say, after a vintage, and then we blend in certain of the best wines. And if we find uh, a certain block or pile that is outstanding, uh, we don't blend it into the volume of certain of the but we bought it by itself. This is, uh, the case of Pagua Mela, it's 100% Pernanillo, and it is the one that we're testing today. This is uh, 2016 uh, vintage, and it's a Pernanillo coming from very close to the river. Advantage is it is uh, sandy soil and gravel, uh, white sand that really reflects the sun, and the gravel, the grassy, you know, the heat from, uh, and releases it to the clear night, but also it is close to the river, which gives two things. One is the fried level, the water tables are close, so now the roots are deep in there, uh, four meters, only, only four meters, which is twice, a little bit more than twice my size, so it's not that far. And, and so they advise how to regulate themselves in the dry vintage establishment kind of having right now. And the second thing is being close to the river, as the nights come longer and longer, in the late August, late September, you get a little bit of humidity of view that helps keep the freshness and, and also um, lays a little bit of uh, um, lights. So our style is, our style is to, to to get uh, uh, the harmony yeah? and, and also uh, how the character of the vine. Okay? You can see uh, red fruit in, and 16 months ago, but it is primary fruit that we 
feel here. You can also already feel the attractive nose that you can get uh, that, or a wine that has been aged in bottle for, for a few years already. What, what I noticed about this is it's textually different. Hmm. That's the, so that was the, the thing for me. It was this, you know, for, for, a, for, sure. for the wine pairing, to I said it. So the, the textural element of it was, was, was really neat because it was something you don't find in Tempranillo you know, because the acidity or the lack of there sometimes doesn't give you that punch in the middle. So oh. really incredible. Uh, number one, as a food, this is a great food itself, but, <laughs> okay, but it has so many potentials because there's all these different ways of Really How do you say that? Beautiful because one. it's actually our, our, our target is to control the rushing tannins of the Tempranillo, uh, not just this idea, the austereness that it has. And, and at the end, uh, we find this wine that really melts in your mouth, sort of coats your mouth. Uh, and it has, I uh, would say, lots of destruction, but refined. Uh, the structure is tall. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's not just like these little things. There's a lot of it there. Yeah. Okay. Can you just finish? Because I'm speaking to last one. Takeaways. Uh, all the wine is in the second year. Uh, yeah. It is a national patrimony site as well. It's a beautiful place. It's incredible. You can see also in the front how austere, in a way, is the, is the landscape of it. The wider spots near the, the limestone. Huh? And the Little River is a, you know, uh, is a key fish, obviously. It was built up in the in the entire region. In the 90s, uh, yeah, we started to begin uh, the start with climate uh, studies that we have uh, now in the Terroir Academy that we are basically running nationally. Right? I will go international soon. Okay. Does the DO permit irrigation or are you totally dry for Our DO? Yes. We do we do use irrigation. Um, and this topic is is sometimes difficult to understand because irrigation was uh, a prohibition in the state because people used to produce more wine and usually lighter wine, small liters of wine of the different quality. What we do is what I like to call survival irrigation. Now, I mean, it's good to be extreme at uh, the suffering of the gut of the vines, but not too much. Huh? Now it's extremely too much. No? So, what we do is basically irrigate uh, drop by drop, just when it's needed. Huh? And we're getting excellent results from it. Uh, and also, we're using what we call the winter irrigation, which is we don't get rain. Because rain is important, but it's more important the amount of water that the soil can hold uh, from the rain. Uh, so usually it rains autumn and winter. And we wouldn't get enough rain during this period. What we do is in March, we do our irrigation, but the plant has not even started. Uh, but just to refill all the soils, because we're taking this water from the Little River. And the river, as I mentioned, it flows to Portugal. So at the end, this water that we are using is going to end up in the Atlantic Ocean. So let's say unuse it, not, not waste it, but unused. So what we're doing is taking advantage of this and, and trying to measure how much wine, how much wine, how much water we have in the source. And if we if need it, we add a little bit of, of water underneath because we know in the summer we're going to so the Selección Especial is a fantastic wine, but this one has so much concentration and, you know, six years, seven years of age, it is so young, right? So it has a long aging potential as well. And I think what is fascinating about Abadia de Puerta is one of the, you know, I want to say vast wineries uh, for um, wine tourism in the Dodo. So the hotel is spectacular, the restaurant is fantastic, but then, you know, the table or school, it's so pretty. Uh, you know, for me as an educator, I, I entered the table or school and I said, oh, I want to have just this in Miami. Can we transfer 
so it is a fascinating place, you know, multiple restaurants. So I, I highly recommend next time you go to the region, you have to visit them and plus, you know, taste this incredible wine, single B, uh, single varietal wines too. Yeah, I mean, we taste especially like uh, over 30 sample wines in terms of the study wines that we show also at the academy. We have to sell these wines just to understand different soils and different, you know, early harvests, late harvests, uh, and how it would have become. And we, it's very educational. But I have to say also that uh, we run everything like food in the winery, uh, trying to you know, be as natural as possible. And now we're heading to All right. So as we prepare to taste our last bread, we will be pouring uh, a Jerez, which is, you know, the last wine in your, your last glasses. But I'll, I'll talk about Numantia in Toro um, just for a bit. So we are still, you know, in, in the Beseta. We are still very close to the river Duero, um, but now um, it's uh, it's a different deal. Um, fascinating place. So lots of thank you, lots of sandy soils and lots of very old vines, pre phylloxera vines. So phylloxera, as you all know, destroyed two thirds of all European vineyards. But in Toro, uh, because of the sandy soils, that Philosopher doesn't like sandy soils, um, he never heard any vine there. So you have vines of you know, up to 200 years, and it's fascinating to go and visit uh, the vineyards in there. Lots of stones as well. So, so yeah, for Bodega Numantia, we are in Zamora. Um, so, Vineyards were f first planted here in the Roman era. This is, you know, how how old it is, and many vines survived the Philostra and uh, and the region extreme climate because it is really, you know, very hot during summer and very cold during winter. So for Numantia, the deal is Toto, and they have 200 um, hectares and 150 parcels spread out throughout Toto. Um, and the variety here is Tinta de Toro, which is, you know, the same grape as Tempranillo. They are certified organic. Um, the vines are dry farms and managed without any pesticides or herbicides. So again, you know, I go back to the mission and the vision of the Grandes Pagos to be sustainable. You can see all these wineries that we're tasting and talking about today, they all have um, this, um, this vision as well. Um, they also grow pine forests to promote biodiversity, and uh, the state director is Lucas Louis, um, Argentinian living in, um, in, in Spain. So let me skip ahead and you can start tasting. Um, yes, so extreme temperatures, um, just little rain in the summer. The dodo does create some fog during the winter, um, but it's still a region of extremes. 600, uh, 650 to 800 meters in altitude and very gravelly soils. So sand uh, and gravel with this clay subsoil. Um, yes, and the vines between 70 and 200 years old. Um, lack of rainfall is a problem, so that is why vines are, are spaced out, you don't plant them side by side, and, um, and this lack of rainfall or irrigation, you know, force the vines to go um, very deep, so that means you have very low yields and very concentrated vines. So um, we thought it was going to be, you know, fun to taste this side by side, we are talking about um, you know, mostly the same grape, but now the Tinta de Toro behaves differently because it is a different environment, okay? A different terroir. So yes, um, Numantia and Dermantia. So Numantia, 100% uh, Tinta de Toro. The vinification is um, 18 months in, you know, small barriques and larger uh, French oak vats. Uh, they use 60% new barrels, so there is a lot of influence from you know, this vanilla, toast, spices that you can see. Uh, 
Um, and uh, for the wine we are tasting, they are sourced from, from ungrafted 70 plus year old wines, okay? The um, Termantia is um, aged um, for longer and it is even from older wines, uh, another excellent quality wine. So, and we are tasting the um, vintage 17, okay? Yeah, very hot vintage. Um, yeah. So, any comments about wine, Sarah? Being picked up the fire. I think. I mean, this is just for this. I know that tasting in great vibes from South Asian countries. It might not be up to tomorrow. It's like, like Spanish napa in that they're sort of so well manicured, fruits, very flush, well defined in quality of that. Yeah. It's just kind of a nice, you know, well put together wine. wine. I like the comparison between Togo and Nanda. And I think, yes, because yeah, like I said, it's a lot of fruits, you know, a lot of oak as well, but so well integrated. Yes, it's, a, it's an expense. I'm assuming I didn't quite say it. It's going to be probably a lot cheaper than that. <laughs> right, this is about $35. Yeah, it's so amazing. Yeah. 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 So it's not just 40 on that mistake. Yeah. But it's so kind of like well composed. Yeah. What I, what I want you all to notice, so this is 15.5% alcohol, but you just don't fit it, right? And there is still a very fresh acidity. So this was fascinating for me visiting the winery because you know, all these very old wines, they get this extremely balanced yet concentrated wines. So you don't feel the alcohol, you know, you know it's a big powerful wine, but you know, in a blind tasting, and if you do those things, call me, um, but in a blind tasting, you would never say 15.5% alcohol, because yes, it is so well integrated, it's so balanced. What's the yield on a Tito Toro vineyard right on average? It seems like it would be highly, like very low, wouldn't it? Um, Best counts per hectare would be probably around 4,000 kilos per hectare, which is very low. Very low. Very low. Very low. Yeah, the, the, the soil is interesting because it's, uh, it's sand and gravel on the upper part, but the clay is underneath, which is actually for sparks and water. And uh, there's, a, there's an interesting saying in Toro that uh, at the end of the summer you may see the, the tractors plowing and they'll dig the, the sand. And, uh, and the, the old, uh, I mean, a worker says that uh, one cultivada equals to two regalos, which means uh, one tractor passing through the vineyard equals to two irrigation. Uh, because what it's, they need to keep so much efficiency that if they don't cultivate or they, they lose by evaporation through capillarity uh, on the part of the leaf. But just you know, covering this uh, capillarity with the tractor is maintaining the humidity down there very well. And uh, at the end, their concern is maintaining the, the city and the festival. It's very extreme. It is uh, the same valley, but much more widespread. A little, a little bit, you know, the, the cold winds, and, and it is more, you know. And, and the pines, like you said, different environments for the family, you know. These three are as thick as skins to fight against the sun, and, and you know, it's, it's interesting. Yep. Yeah. All right. And some takeaways from the month, yeah. So, um, early to recognize the potential of Toro as a region uh, and, and Tinta de Toro as a variety as well. They do have this duality of expression. They are warm but fresh, right? So warm in the sense of the high alcohol, yet they are fresh because there is acidity. And most vines are between 70 and 200 years old. And um, local growers have cared for these plants for generations and they work very closely with Humantia. All right, and um, yeah, some pictures in here. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Yeah, so you can see, you know, the very sandy and um, stony type of soils, the vines planted as goblets. 
you know, so no, no specimens um, in here with poles and wires. Very hard to manage as well. So this picture, I think, was taken during uh, the time I was there as well, because I remember those boxes that they were just about to start harvesting as well. <laughs> Um, okay, so, and um, now, you know, for the last one, we are going to the south region of Spain, and um, we are going to see headaches or sharing. So, south region, you know, very diverse terrain, you do have some uh, high elevation, uh, but also you have um, uh, quartile plains, uh, plains as well. The Atlantic and Mediterranean seas exert influence in here. So for those of you who have heard before, you know, the two winds, the Poniente coming from the Atlantic and the Levante coming from the Mediterranean Sea. A couple of, of uh, features in here, so two um, Sierras or Cordilleras, the Pantica again here, and the Sierra Morena, so the mountain ranges, um, rivers uh, around here. But mostly, this is Mediterranean climate. There is a more continental climate inland, okay? Uh, vineyards up to um, 1,200 meters, and uh, soils are varied. So the Albariza, which is really famous in Sherry, but also alluvial clay, sand, and granite. Couple of populations in here, so Jerez, of course, Montilla Bolivis, Malaga, Ibera de Guadiana, and so on. And, um, now for the wineries uh, in here, so Palacio Fermado, Finca Moncloa, Valdespino, Alvear, and Los Alpulares, okay? So today, we are going to take our trip uh, with Google Earth to Valdespino. Now you see how the ocean, uh, the Mediterranean Ocean is um, it's very close by. So again, this is um, when you visit Jerez, right? So you need all these barrels uh, for the Solera system, right? And yes, uh, the location Jerez de la Frontera, Cadiz, uh, Valdespino is one of the oldest wineries in Jerez, and the origins reach back to the 13th century. Um, the deal is Jerez, in this case, shared. Um, and they do have 165 hectares in total, but only 20 hectares of that are GB approved. Key varietals, Palomino Fino, okay? A white grape variety that is used for sherry. Um, they are certified organic in eight hectares, but I bet you know, this is increasing with time. And they are the only winery in Hedis still making single vineyard wines and barrel fermented wines. Um, and uh, you're going to see a picture of the single vineyard. Winemaker uh, Victoria Frutos, who has been working with Jose Esteves since 2005. Um, yeah. So that is the legendary Pago Marchanudo. Beatriz, you want to talk about why this Pago is so special? Why the single vineyard is so special? Uh, they say this is the oldest Pago made in Europe because it's data from the Phoenician time, from the 5th century before Christ. They've been making wine there since then. Yeah, so it's a long time. Okay, yeah, so one of the oldest single vineyards, or the oldest single vineyard in Europe since Phoenician times, yes. Um, so again, more Mediterranean climate, uh, the Atlantic influence is critical to bring some freshness to these vines. Um, vineyards on some elevation in here, and the Albarista, the very white soil of the region. So this is calcium carbonate with clay and silica and a subsoil with chalk. So that retains a lot of water as well, which is you know great for um, for hot years. Organic practices, uh, they use a, a training system called Vara and Pulga, um, which protects grapes from the sun, and they alternate branches each year to give you know the plants um, to rest. So um, 
Latino Innocente. Um, it is what we are tasting today. So Tio Perez, 100% uh, Palomino Pino, fermentation in oak barrels, and then biological aging on the floor for an average of 10 years, okay? So that will give you that very yeasty, biscuity, brioche type of notes into the wine, that very salty tank finish as well. Um, and this wine passes through 10 criaderas and soleras, okay? So um, you have, you know, this is not a vintage wine, you have a mixture of older wines and younger wines for freshness. So when you say passes through, the Soleras, does that mean it's rotated every year to a different Solera? Yeah. I, so it's I, like doing like one year it's in a low char, one year it's in a neutral, like that kind of thing, or is it just straight up? No, what, I'm, what, I'm, um, what we are trying to say is that you get wines mixed from oh. different Soleras, yes, so exactly. Not, not because, actually right, neutral. exactly. Not a, you're not moving, you know, you're moving a quantity of wine to fill these Soleras. So you can keep the freshness and keep you know, the yeast uh, growing because the floor is a living yeast. So it needs the oxygen, but also it needs, so you're you know. basically topping off with other vintages? Yes, you're topping off, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This has a, a lot more, it's got a lot more of the full character, it's got a lot more fruit than the best of There's a lot of actually natural. I think of the others you use. Like yeah. Um, so I think what Sarah is commenting is such a great comment. Um, so because normally when you taste the pheno, um, they are mo mostly about the biological aging, so getting that you know yeasty, brioche type of notes. And in this case, you have the citrus, and you have some peach fruit as well, and you have some coral character. So what I imagine here is that the fruit is so concentrated that you know it's not just um, your volume Palomino Pino, but you're now getting concentrated fruits that will translate to the wine. So would you say um, that as well, that the fruit is so concentrated and ripe and well managed that you can see that in the final wine, even after 10 years of, of uh, biological aging? Yeah, it tells about how well it's meant, because uh, it is easier to get oxidation, to get, uh, uh, lose this freshness, that uh, Sarah always mentioned, and uh, to keep the wine like this after 10 years, only with the protection of floor, it is, it's not that easy. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's very valuable wines, has uh, lots of history and tradition in Jerez, and there are wines that are only in contrast and you cannot find wine like this anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And just to, because we're talking about food matching, I think obviously underappreciated is the food matching potential of these wines. So what is, food food food. what is the food matching? What is the food matching that you would recommend? So oh, that's so um, Well, you know, the probability of charcuterie boards and yes. things like that, obviously, but, but obviously, come on, you can get it working. <laughs> with yeah. it, it's amazing. With so many foods. I mean, when you're in the educator class okay. there, they serve you breakfast, lunch, and dinner with That's with amazing. all the sherry, which okay. is at the end of three days, it's rough. But but it goes with so many things. For the fritos, tortillitas de camarón, oh. whatever. A lot of fried food that is popular down in the south. Yeah. It's so good with food. And of course, it's mostly outside of Spain. And actually, most of Spain is ignored as a food matching wine. So, yeah. <laughs> Gambas, yes. a la planta. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm hungry already. Um, yeah, so I think, you, you know, Fido is such a unique wine because you have this salty finish, right? So think about, you know, olives or, you know, the jamón. It's just perfect, right? Um, so, yes. It's, it's a great aperitif wine. And today we were, you know, we were thinking, okay, should we serve it with the whites first? But we decided to serve it later just because it is fortified wine, obviously, um, but I agree, it's a, it's a great uh, wine to match, you know, different kind of foods. Yes. What's, what's the alcohol wine? Should be around 15, 15, 15 5. Yeah, 15%. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, yes, because we are all hungry, um, you know, let's, um, let's,
see the top three takeaways from Valdespino. So only winery in Jerez, still making the single vineyard wines and barrel fermented wines. Manchabnudo vineyard, the high altitude plot of pure Alvarezo soil, you know, the oldest in Europe. Um, and the DO regulations require Fino to have a minimum of two years of aging, but the Fino Innocente has an average of 10 years on the floor. So really long age. And in here in this picture, as you can see, that's very white Alvariza soil as well. Um, so, and a um, couple of pictures from the winery um, and the vineyards as well, and the barrels of Solera. Fascinating um, place. And um, yes, and if there are some questions and comments, we're here for you. Otherwise, you can scan um, this QR code for all the wineries' profiles that you tasted in here. And we, we thank you all very much for your attention and time and for being with us today. I think it's interesting through six wines how we traveled from, uh, throughout Spain and understood the huge diversity of styles of wines that can be made there. We only tasted six wines, but there's a bit of a problem that we are about to start. We we'll probably do a different series to meet all of the land established producers. There's a fantastic way to learn about Spain, Spain and uh, Spain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.